All right, welcome back to Kingwin Pro League 2015. We are going onwards to the playoffs. We're about to start the first match between Firebat and Kalento. Now, this was a, a very long introduction, but we're going to be moving on to the action now. So don't resident sleeper on us, guys. It's about to start. So Firebat is going to be starting with his Rogue, and Kalento is going to be picking up his Warlock. This might be interesting, I would say. Yeah. First of all, what kind of Rogue is it? It might be even Malagos Rogue. We have seen some yeah, with you know, resurrection right. of that stuff. And then we have, Han uh, we have Warlock, which can be Zoo. It can be Midrange Demon Lock. It can be Hand Lock. Yeah. It can be a mix of all those three. Right. I think Zoo, like, War Warlock is back in the spot where, you know, for a while, Mage had the spot where it could be Mage, uh, Freeze Mage. It could be Mech Mage. It could be Tempo, Tempo Mage, Mage, Grinder yeah. Mage. It can be all sorts of Mages. But now we're back to the point where Warlock, again, with the comeback of Zoo, has the most diverse, de like, you know, possible decks. Um, so depending on what Kalento's playing, I think the matchup will be obviously very different. How yeah. do you feel about Zoo versus Rogue in the, right now? It changed. Like some time ago, yeah. Miracle Rogue was just the best deck against Zoo. Like well, there was no, best, uh, no better deck than, uh, than Miracle Rogue that was fit to beat the Zoo deck. And now it kind of changed because we have the Void Color, which has such a huge value. If, even if it died, it's a free for minion, right? Yeah. If it gets taunted up, Rogue is a really big, pr uh, really big pile of troubles if, if he doesn't have a sap for that. Even if, if the Void Color dies and it spawns, let's say, even if Gang Boss. That's a huge problem for the It could rogue. be a flame imp and it's still annoying. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say that this this matchup depends a lot about the um it depends a lot on the type of warlock and that's that's it. It, it can go either way. But I still believe that the rogue when properly played might have the upper uh, upper hand here. Yeah, and I think Firebat's an exceptionally good rogue player as yeah. well. Like I know that hyped and I would I would say hyped and dog are the players that I think uh, have played Rogue the most after Miracle Rogue has been phased out. Mm -hmm. They've still, you know, they've been playing that deck non-stop or that archetype, that class. Whereas Firebat, I think, just plays a bit of everything. He just picks up whichever decks he feels are the best and yep. pilots them fairly adequately. Yep. So, we'll be moving on to the game very shortly. The game is starting. So the players should be getting themselves a pretty good starting hand. Well, hmm. So, we have the typical, I would say... Miracle Rogue with the addition of Piloted Shredders, which we have seen quite a lot yeah. with the introduction of Tinker Shops of the Oils. And then, then we have Colento with Nerubian X, Void Course, and Iron Beak Owls. I would say three trademark cards for Zoo nowadays. I would say, yeah, Iron Beak Owl could be found in Handlock, Midrange Lock. Then again, if you look at this, this could very well be Midrange Warlock, which I know Colento does favor quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's mm -hmm. a deck that he's played a lot of, and I think he was one of the first players that I've seen make it work very, very well. Oh, wow. Look at that hand for Firebat. Yeah, coin SI7. And also Deadly Poison uh, with Blade Flurry. Right. This is one of the most important combinations you can get yeah. against that, ty that type of board control deck. I don't think it gets much better than this. And what's interesting is Kalento's got, you know, the coin, the most important card against aggro matchups. Firebat got the coin. Uh, Firebat got the coin, yes, yeah, sorry. And that's a really important card if you're facing a deck like Zoo, which, as we see, oh god, he picked up a Void Terror. Now, this might be a really huge problem for Firebat. Yeah. You know, that, well, he has double, double Deadly Poison, so that's five damage sweep with the, uh, with the Blade Flurry. He could wow. wipe the board, actually, but that's going to be a huge investment for three minions. If he has to do it, this could be a big problem. We're going to have to see what Kalento plays, but Void Terror does look too good I think to pass. just Void Terror on, on the egg only, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Otherwise, Sap would probably be yep. an issue. And now, Firebat faces the situation when he might clear the board yeah. if he uses almost all of his resources, so let's which think feels bad. Deadly, yeah, it's just so horrible deadly to have Deadly coin to agent to deal to damage to the uh, Void Terror. So next turn, you might have a better sweep with the Deadly Poison. Yeah, I think I mean, uh, not going through? all in on the Deadly Poisons is obviously the right play. I, I don't think uh, you can afford going all in on the What the about... On the Deadlies, that is. Just dropping the Farseer here. So you let it be traded away, and the then you get then, a uh, Void Terror away. will trade with the Farseer, right? So you have, you kind of essentially gain 5 HP, because you right. kill 2, and the Void Terror kills the Farseer. Uh, but it's, it's kind of the same when you just... 
I like the I like the the coin deadly poison SI7 a lot so better. So the first option. Like yeah, the first option we mentioned I think is a bit uh, it's a bit of a safer play and it gives you a lot oh, of wow. uh, leeway. Wow, goes double deadly poison. No. Well, this Wait, is what we call an all in. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, he's going to deny his opponent the ability to get an amazing defense of Argus. So now the void caller is going to come out. Lucky for uh, Firebat, there are no demons left in Kanto's uh, hand for the time being. Unlucky for Konenta because he didn't get the value from the Defender of Argos. Right, that's exactly where he wanted it to be. Like, the board was yeah. very well set up. Oh, look, that's sad. That's the void convenient. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Klentos got Defender of Argos, though. For oh, goodness. Now, this is a really important draw. So what do we do here? You sacrifice it? I think I, yeah, I, I consider you do, you vomiting want to deny my the sap, right? Yeah, you can't let it be sapped, so then you discard cards. I think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is definitely the play he's got to make. He's gonna make it. Down goes the Shredder, and out comes a useless card. Okay. <laughs> it's <laughs> a 3-2. It's Better a 3-2, right. Three. Right. In this case, it was, because it dealt more damage, which yeah. puts the Doom Guard in an easier range to kill. But now there's a big problem for Firebat. Also, there's something important to say. The Death Rattle um, triggers yeah. ha have been important here, because you, you could have seen that the spawn from the Planted Shredder was after the Nav Juggler. The Nav Juggler, yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so the Void card was played first. And this way, it pops first before the Palter Shredder comes so out. So it can deal damage to the minion that comes out if it were, for yep. instance, a 2-1. Yep. Uh, now there's a really good play for Firebat. Well, they're really good. That's maybe an overstatement, but sapping the Doom Guard, then using the SI7 on the Knife Juggler looks pretty appealing to me. He goes for the Palter Shredder, which will mm, give him more board control in the future unless there's an implosion. <laughs> unless there's an implosion, yeah, that's kind of inconvenient. But I still think that... Oh, wow, okay. I would go for the Defend of Argos anyway, you know? Just stop the rogue, because you've seen one Blade Fury and two Deadly Poison, which is a really big deal. Oh, let's see what comes out of the Shredder. Uh-oh. Hmm. Not the card you want to see, but at the same time, do you really want to waste your 5 damage on this? I don't think you want to waste 5 damage on it. I, th I think you just go face, and that's it. 8 damage to the face is really important. Oh, he sacrifices the Nav Dragon for that. Okay. Well, that's a pretty big investment, but what is he really afraid of? I mean, if Eviscerate hits the Doom Guard, he's still ahead, right? Usually. But I guess flooding the board for Firebat is the only way to win. The defense of Argus is going to be a huge problem. Alright, so... We got the defense of Argus on the Doom Guard. He could trade with everything. I just don't know if it's worth it to buff the egg at this point. So if you buff the egg and you trade everything away into the three threes, hmm. would you ever consider just defend of Argus, the egg and the Doom Guard? I think the placement is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. It feels a bit weird, but yeah. Oh wait, what if you play the creeper on the far left and then defender it? Oh, oh yeah, right, goodness. Thanks. Wow, that's damage. damage out. He might just go face at this point, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's no reason not to. You've seen Blade Flurry and pretty much everything. The, that's pretty much the only board wipe left in Rogue anymore. Yep. So if you've seen Blade Flurry plus double deadly, that's as good as it's going to be. Battle of Lives has no impact here. Yeah, it's, no, com it's completely dead. Yep. Uh, that actually does solve the problem over two turns, which is too late. Okay, never mind. That doesn't <laughs> solve a problem. If it takes two turns, it's probably not a solution. All right, well, uh, I think... Uh, he likes prepper, prep here. Yeah. What about sprint into prep, into, into sap? Into hope to live one more turn? Yeah, well... Okay, you know what? I don't dislike that. It also lets you fetch possible spell damage, which could be really important. So... You know, that Blade Flurry was really all-in from Firebat. Like, the double deadly Blade Flurry was really, really all-in. It was all-in and it doesn't work. Yeah, That's I think that might have been a bit of an, uh, an overextension, but he knows better than I do. Ooh, he's got Fan of Knives and the, the Backstab. The Backstab doesn't do much. Ooh, that's end of the game. Yeah, no prep, no win. That's exactly what he was looking for. 10-9 well, Doom card. I would say that's a big creature. That's balance. And now Colento is showing off his deck with a bit wow. of BM. Now Farbat gets a glean into the deck. He knows there are two Nigelers. <laughs> Crucial information right here in yeah. Conquest format when he doesn't 
use the deck anymore. Yeah, it doesn't really matter at this point, right? Because he's <laughs> won with the deck. Like, you can, in the Conquest, you can BM as much as you want. That's like the one format where you're almost encouraged to do so, because you can show your opponent. You know, <laughs> I, I won with a Doomsayer in my zoo deck, um, and then you can just have fun with that. So yep. the next deck that Firebat is going to have to play is, you know, he's got his Rogue still you know, able to be played, but I'm curious to see whether or not he's going to stick to it or move on to another deck. Let's, uh, let's see. So Colento is up with his Warlock deck, so he has Druid Priest Warlock. You know, when it comes to best of seven, right. the amount of probability, like, uh, I mean, of the prob probable matchups that you can have, right. increased so much, yeah. I just feel, you just don't care. You just pick the deck. You play, you play like ladder, where you bring four good decks and you yeah. hope it matches out pretty well. Um, I guess best of seven ad adds a single layer of complexity that's making everything even less likely to work the way you think. I think it adds like seven potential matchups. Um, mm -hmm. Which just is, is it's almost impossible to keep track of. So yep. maybe at that point you just bring solid decks. And you and still hope. don't know the ma the classes. It's like you're, you're in the blind pick here. Yeah, if you, that's right. An example: if this this will be the semi-final, and you know your opponent, right? You yeah. know which classes he plays. You know what type of decks he plays. Then you have more informations to ba base on with your you know next next match yeah, with right. your next game when you can pick the class accordingly to your game plan and your opponent's game plan. And right now, I feel like it's a really huge blind pick. You're blind picking until maybe the you assume your opponent comes down to one last deck? Yeah, um, yeah, I would guess so. Okay, yeah. it does make sense. So Firebat's going to stick to Rogue either way, and uh, Kalento's going to be moving on to Druid, which, interestingly enough, I think is still a... It's got it's kind of phased out of the metagame a bit nowadays. Like I see it, I see it less than I used to when uh, Emperor was hyper popular. But it's as consistent as it's always ever been. Like it's in KPL in yeah. the nine weeks right. of KPL that he had, Druid was the most picked deck ever, ever, no. and still it manages to have fifty percent win ratio. Which in a conquest format where you should be punished for picking classes that are yeah. predictable. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, and so. I think Enervate and Wildgrove are kind of, you know... Balanced! <laughs> yeah, because of that. <laughs> to put it that way, I think that what it, it comes down to that. And Emperor did add a tool to the, you know, the toolbox that was already yeah, massive, so... Like, you had four, de four cards that were skewing the mana system, Yeah. and now you have a fifth one. Exactly. So I guess if you could add another one, you would make everything even worse. Mm -hmm. So going on to the game here, Kalento picking up a Wildgrove wow. and a Harrison Jones. <laughs> and an Innervate against a Rogue, I think this is a pretty good hand, Lothar. This is a pretty good hand, I would say. Okay, so you just, you know, coin Wild Growth and go all in from there. Coin out. If you coin out Wild Growth this turn, you say to your opponent, I have a next Remas shade. Yeah. But then there's no 50 shades of next Remas, so... Yeah, there's no 50 shades of Nax, and the problem with this play is... It telegraphs something to a rogue to ideally maybe get her to play around it. He's just gonna go for the Harrison Jones right away. Well, it's a five that's mana a, that's ancient a decent, of law. That's a decent play, actually. It yeah. forces Firebat's early game tempo to be thrown out completely. It's it's kind of weak to backstab agent though. Right. But fortunately for him, does nothing like that. And now Firebat is kind of pushed to play Farseer, I would say. Yeah, it's just a straight up body. That or you play Dagger Deadly. Or you keep deadly for the eviscerate next turn. Then you have to play it next turn, yeah. Yeah. But then you deny yourself the po possible pile to treader. Like this is so bad oh, for man. for Firebat. And the thing is, it doesn't even matter what Firebat's like game plan is. If he takes enough damage, it's inevitable he's gonna die. Like that's how Druid plays yeah. typically, right? They're putting you on a clog very early, and it doesn't really matter what you do past a certain point. If you've reached 14 health, you're probably dead. Even less so when they got the tempo and they can afford yeah. to use your the claw as chargers. And the Palti Shredder dealt seven damage so far. Yeah. Well, well, we'll see. We have four now, but the Bad Bomber will attack in the face. So that seven for just four mana. Yeah, and it's not even done. It, this 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 uh, little bomber might actually deal even more. Yep. There's a possibility of that. So. And we see there's a swipe in hand. So if you go face with the Joy of the Claw, right? Oh, he played it in taunt mode. I have to say I'm a little surprised, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm surprised here too, because you just saw one eviscerate also being you know, played. I was you know, 97.37% sure that he would play it as a charge, but there's always that at 14, charge. Right, right, yeah. You put him on the clock right away. And you're threatening lethal. 
with the combo eventually. But. Well, to be honest, if you if he wanted to play it in taunt mode, I yeah. would say Palter Shredder would be better. Right, then playing a 4-6 on taunt. Because it doesn't really... You know, if he if it kills your your uh, Mad Bomb with the attack, you're kind of okay with that. Because what do you care? It, there will be like backstabs, agents all over the place. So you don't need that free body anyway. So I think what he's trying to think, he's thinking about is if he had a sap, he would have already used it. So by putting it a four six, I'm forcing him to attack into it anyway, and he has to mm -hmm. also use the eviscerate on. Thinking, it feels like, uh, it feels like maybe I'm meta thinking this, but there's a, I wouldn't put it past Colento. Here you have two options, three actually. Pilot the shutter, hero power. Go face, trade the Mad Bomber. <laughs> that sounds uh, that sounds pretty. Then the second option, forward. Keeper of the Grove, deal two damage to the Power Seer, finish it off with the Hero Power, and I feel that's the most powerful because you maintain a huge board control. You're not weak to sap at all, yeah. not even one bit. And, and your your health points are just mana points at this uh, in this situation because you use it as a um, wrath. Yeah. One. Without the card rules, Fire Bass just, draw yeah. is actually surprisingly terrible here. And like Kalento, on the other hand, with the Wild Growth Interfade right away, and the Harrison Jones denying Fire Bass ability to use his weapon. Uh, Savage draw. Wow, is that, that might is be that lethal? lethal with swipe? Yeah, swipe, Savage draw, that's lethal. Four, seven, nine, eleven, fifteen damage. Well, raise your pepperonis, boys. This is it for the first game. Second game, that is. Druid just doing what it does. I mean, I have nothing else to add to that. This wild growth innervate, and then the perfect follow-up. Yep. Um, you can't really stop stuff like this. It's not really you down can't. to, to you your playstyle at that point. Especially when you're sitting with double sprints, tinkers, tinker right. swaps, or, or yeah, like he's got the worst possible curve, and he yeah. runs into the best possible curve. And coming from a druid, that's even worse because they have tempo minions. They have mm -hmm. ways mm -hmm. to put you on inevitability eventually. So it's just a matter of time before you fall down. Mm -hmm. So, Firebats broke so far, going 0-2, but if he's targeted something specific, maybe he has targeted something specific from Kalento, say a priest. Um, Can you target that specifically? The priest? Kalento's brought it every week, besides, mm -hmm. I think, one. So, yeah. there's probably a good argument to be made for playing a, you know, a heavy anti-priest um, lineup. It has backfired for, I think it was... Um, for Actual night, and it got stolen by Cabal <laughs> Shadow Priest with the Shrink Meister. But like, there's a good argument to be made for making a deck that's heavily anti-priest uh, or lineup that is. And Firebat is very well known for doing so. You know, playing if he if his mage is a freeze mage, and he's got a rogue and the handlock and the Grim Patron Warrior. I think this could be an anti-priest lineup from Firebat. You think that Grim Patron is a good counter to priest? I think it's viable just because you can afford taking your time to, you know, just OTK the opponent. You mentioned mm -hmm. Frothing Berserker earlier. Um, yeah, well, yeah, Frothing Berserker, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but then you have Death Lords, which can be a huge threat to your board. Uh, Kalento, uh, he doesn't necessarily play that version, although Light Bomb has been, like, you know, Light Bomb Priest is so popular right now in tournaments, and KPL is also... Um, so we've if seen you play for sure Patron that. against Priest... Right. You don't play it for board control, you play it for OTK. Yeah, for damage. You just go face yeah. over two turns. I think if you, like, you try to hoard cards, I think, and then you drop a good Emperor. And if you get it off, then, then that's you have effectively Commander, game. Frothing yeah. Berserker, Frothing Berserker, Patron, Inner Rage, Inner Rage, Warrior. Yeah, it's an, it's an OTK. <laughs> kind of like when you play, you know, the Nario Warrior with Raging Worgen. Yeah. You, you could say, oh, it's pretty weak because Priest heals up. Yeah, but Priest doesn't heal up for 10 in a turn. It's two per turn. So it's, if you don't do any it's not damage... Even that. You deal 28. Yeah, <laughs> then let him deal with this, right? <laughs> yeah. It's over at that point. You could, but that's why and the game's done. Yeah. Um, so I think Grim Patient Warrior is not too bad against Breeze. I might be wrong, but from what I've seen, combo decks tend to do well. well uh, maybe we'll that. have to see that. Maybe yeah. we'll be witnessing that moment here. Yeah, because the weakness of combo, I think, is, you know, aggro decks. Mm -hmm. You know, Face Hunter falls down to Patron as an ex like an exception, but generally <laughs> speaking, um, I, I say... Combo decks get punished by Mech Mage and they get punished by Zoo. Like it's very really heavily. Interesting because Patron War Patron Warrior is a typical combo deck. Right. Right? But it base of damage. Yeah. So this I mean not as damage to your opponent. Right. But damage to your minions. Your own and stuff. those those can be used symmetri symmetri uh, symmetrically. So you can deal the damage to your minions and your opponent minions. And that's the reason why is it so good against Face Hunter. And you have weapons. Yeah, you, you basically snowball off of their board and your own. So it's like a double, once you get the, the train going, 
It doesn't stop because there's no way to stop it. It's like a double-edged sword. Right. I guess that's but Warrior has no swords. No swords, yeah, it's only <laughs> axes, man. I yeah. just don't know, though, if that's what Firebat was doing. You know, targeting priests, it feels like a really good strategy, and knowing him, it's not, it wouldn't be very surprising. Mm -hmm. um, but we still don't know it. So the players are going to be moving on to their next match. It's going to be Rogue versus Priest, Firebat versus Colento. I think Rogues have a pretty good matchup against Priest. We've said that multiple yeah. times. Yeah, multiple times. Um, but I mean, it's still a, a toss-up, Colento playing Priest so well. This, uh, this may be very different. Huh. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Um, Rogue versus Priest is just some. Some of the times you just don't feel even threatened by the by the priest. Yeah, just, it just doesn't he drops put pressure. a minion. You sap it. It's yeah. really slow. Then it doesn't really even deal damage. There's no burst incoming, so you're like sitting on 10 HP, and you're like, oh, okay, it's fine. And I think <laughs> for that reason, you know, that's kind of how it plays. It plays a bit combo rogue. Like the way it works, well, rogue mm -hmm. is it tries to accumulate pieces of combos and then unleash the damage. So there's a good reason, I think, why it's doing well against Priest. All right, getting to the game here. Uh, we see... Uh, I, I, how do you even evaluate this hand from, from Kalento? I think it sucks. <laughs> All four cards suck. <laughs> okay, that sounds uh, like pretty straightforward. Usually, you want an offshore cleric. Right. But why? Yeah, why in this situation? Yeah. And the Shadow Madness, okay, it's cool at, against Farsi as an agent, but the rogue has to get two minions. To get value yeah, to from get that. value from it, you have to let him play two three yeah. threes on the board, which is <laughs> or almost a, too problematic. Or a farseer into piloted shredder, but then you're like, but if he has those two minions, even if he has one minion, yeah. then he can go with tinker shot soft shot support and punch your face once yeah. with it, and it's and already like, seven okay. damage. You're not like seven health. You're not. What do you do with a seven attack minion? You can't shadow menace that. You have to shadow word death, but you lose your entire turn, yep. so you're not really anywhere ahead. Oh, Colento finds an Orchard Cleric, and now that the Wild Power was damaged, Firebat has no way to handle it unless he goes for the uh, SI7 agent play. Mm. Wait, I have the idea. No, there's no idea. Never mind. Coin agent is the one Yeah. One, one option to deal with that, but... What Coin about Shredder just... Prep Eviscerate? Probably What not, about right? you ignore the... Do can you, you, can you ignore a damage minion on a priest board? I don't know, man. I, I feel very uh, threatened by that. I feel like that's a very risky move. So hmm. I think prep coin into sprint, <laughs> <laughs> into sprint is a great play. So is he, he going to go the for the prep of this raid? That's what I want to know. I don't think so, because it's very all in, but uh, he does not indeed. Fault still. That's an interesting card, because it feels like a recurring card in Priest. Yeah. Sometimes like zero, sometimes two. Sometimes you put, yeah, exactly. You always, you don't, it's a flex spot for Priest. And mm -hmm. I, I like that about the card. Um, but a lot of people said that they feel like Priest wouldn't be playable without Thought Steel. Really? Some player, yeah, some people, some people think that the best matchups of Priest are made, uh, oh, oh, wow. wow. <laughs> That's not that bad for... That's actually... Actually, it's, a, it's kind of annoying with the Shadow Madness, but at least you can trade any 3-drop. Blood Mage Talnos gets traded into it. Yeah. It's kind of... Uh, and... That's <laughs> yeah, good damage, but... How do you deal with the <laughs> Priestess now so he's not able to trade with your... What's the, what's the name? One-Eyed Cheat? One-Eyed Cheat, yeah, that's yeah. the name. I, I don't know, like, I wonder one day if they'll add, like, the Goblin subtype. Oh, there's the back stab. That's He was looking for that. That was really important. He to didn't draw. find a single one so far, so I don't think it's. No, that, that, that was the last draw. The yeah. last draw. <laughs> oh, oh, look, second Pyromancer. Okay, so you Pyromancer That's... Fold Steel? I think so, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It kind of dies. Well, the it's dagger. a sacrifice, but. Is this, is this a good time? Is that a Wild Pyro, Light of the Naru, Heal the Wild Pyro? Uh, That's not even that bad, is it? Is it? Well, you spawn a 1 2, which will be a 3 2 after the heal. Yeah. Is that, or you go a lot of the Naru to kill the 4 1, which is fine too? Yeah, he does that, alright. Yeah, it's, it will spawn the minion also. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. not bad. That, that's actually the best move here. Yeah. Oh, look! Look at that. Who appeared next turn? And look at the hand size of Firebat here. He's gonna be able to get himself almost a. Uh, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's gonna be whoa. disgusting damage. And also, this is the situation I was talking about. Yeah. You don't care about the board for the priest. He's not going to kill you. He's yeah. not going to kill you in f four turns, I would say. Oh. That's a bit problematic. 
I think you'd fold steel anyway. I think you have to try the thought steel, yeah. If you fold steel, if you find um, backstep, second one, deadly poison. He, you know what? There may be two deadlies left. Fire steel. Wow, you can use it for damage. This Look is at crazy. That. <laughs> oh, yeah. Colento, seeing it right away, and the trade. That's really great. Because what you, a sick thought steal. You use the light of Naru right. to kill a creature, to spawn a creature, to kill a creature. Yeah, this is just <laughs> insane. It's, it, it's complete. Uh, it's combo world. I, I don't even understand. Like this is probably the best outcome it could have gotten from thought steal on the probably, six mana. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Now, Corento has to deal with the emperor, but it already done its work. Yeah. So what you're telling me here is that the thought steal that summoned a minion to deal damage to a minion that was dealt damage to a minion to summon the light warden, now died to the minion that was thought stolen. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that that is some serious stuff. Drake for four mana. Sure. Why Balanced. not? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes. So if you redagger, it costs. You can play deadly and then blade flurry, but that's not really worth it. What yet. about a really big Edwin? How big can you make? I think you can actually make it quite big. Like eight hundred and eight hundred. That sounded Look, more wrong than I thought. Um, use two mana. So you have essentially five mana with that. Well, never mind. He doesn't go for it. Yeah, he's avoiding the. Eviscerate now, Edwin. right? To Okanai, I would say, or to the Belcher. Because then you deny him the option to heal the Belcher. Edwin at four is a good idea. Besides, like that way it's out of the way of Shadow or Death, so you can just afford it. I would reading, go you know. all in with the Edwin, you know? You like that? And most of the priests that I have seen lately have no Shadow or Death. Really? That's right, oh, actually. One. That makes a lot of sense. If Grim Patron's everywhere, what are you going to yeah. Shadow or Death? The 5 2 that comes out of the Inner Rage play? Maybe you will double inner rage it. Oh seven. wow, Kalento finding the second Akinai off the top. And now the Advent dies. Well, rest in peace. Shrink Meister. Wait, is that oh he can steal something next turn? Yep. Yeah. That that is good. And now he, he heals the Belcher. So Oh man. Yeah. That's it. That's why I didn't like killing the Akinai, you know? Yeah. I, I guess what I, I get what you're meaning. Yeah, what you're saying. Hey, you got some. Uh, you got a fanboy on the stream. You didn't see the the hashtag Twitter thing, did you? Well, I, no. Check I your tweets afterwards. Get a lot okay. of love. All right. So this um, this is still very easy for Firebat to handle. He has a sprint for six mana. Yeah. <laughs> draw four cards. Six mana. Who what? said Miracle Rogue was dead? You just changed the uh, draw condition. Yeah. Agent to Belcher seems nice. I think you can afford redaggering here. Yes, I would definitely do this this turn because this you have then a zero mana later on. You have deadly poison, deadly poison for oh one mana. <laughs> That's crazy. So this is crazy. Can you picture that? Wait, dagger deadly, deadly. Then you how much set up damage is that? Thinkers. I don't even know. How much damage <laughs> is that? You have you you oh my dagger God. up this turn. Why? Why would you use that? No, you don't. I, don't, I like that. I don't like I it at all. I wouldn't use the charge, though. Oh, no. Th this is why I dislike, no? Oh, no. This is why I don't like it. Yeah, I would go for the deadly, deadly Tinker Master Blade Flurry next turn. Yeah, if set needed. up the, like, the biggest possible I would AOE say that's first. like 15 damage. Yeah. So Kalento is not going to steal anything. He's just going to opt to trade everything away, which makes quite a bit of sense because it allows him to develop uh, the injured Blade Master. Yeah, end of Blade Master with um, Circle, I would say, because you. But the problem is you didn't see a sap yet. Yeah. So maybe it's better to save this save this Circle. You know, there's one thing about Kalento's Breeze that changed over the course of KPL. I don't know if you noticed, but he uh, threw out Recombobulator for Doctor Boom. I was very sad. Really? Yeah. It was cut out sometime during the game, and now he finds a sap. I guess that's a good time to do it. I mean, you you like the trade? Uh, I would say trade is better. Trade Redagger. And you want yeah, to you're right. It sets up a much better Tinker's turn next turn. You, it's either accept this and deal free damage to the face. It's horrible. No, it's horrible. Because it's you don't want to be left with that free damage on your board. You sold me, Lothar. Like, I can't even defend the idea I had <laughs> for like five <laughs> seconds. There's no way I can defend that line of play. It's just horrible. All together. All right. Well, now that's being stolen. 
Let's get... No, use the one you top decked! Oh. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't use the one he top decked. I disagree with that. Yeah, that's a huge misplay. Yeah, huge did misplay he, here. There's did no he scold, squelch his opponent? Oh, man. That's, that's also a misplay BM. if he didn't do that. Yeah. So, Firebat's gonna go for... The full board clear. A big dagger, <laughs> at least. <laughs> no, here's backstab. You, you look at that. Tall nose, yeah. backstab the 4 free. Attack face and go crazy. Why not Thanos? Why do not you, Thanos now? Do you, can you just Phantom Knight instead? Wait, 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 wait. What's going on? Oh my god, he's going all in. Six. Um, he has three mana left after that. Blade Flurry one. Eviscerate two. Okay, he's not going all in on this. Wait, why didn't why? he play the Thanos after? Whoa. He didn't want to buff his attack? No. Why? Why not? It's good, right? That was a misplay, like, there's no... I think he changed no his line to... of play sometimes yeah. in the middle there, but... He lost out on three additional And now it can be, can be stolen. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure I like that very much. Well, it's a bit too late now, Thanos is fighting for the other team, and Firebat may run out of fuel eventually. Well, he has backstab, he has sap. Yeah, but it's still... He has low tap. His follow-ups are looking a little less powerful, but he does have the board. But the thing is, if Kalento lives, the Akinai Circle on its own is going to be bad enough. But that, was, that that play might cost him the game. I here. think so, yeah. And there may be something about that play that um, will carry on and be an issue. It's still not bad. The second Tinker and Eviscerate. So Kalento has to find a way to clear the board, and I feel it's kind of easy. Yeah, so I, think <laughs> it's pretty, I think it's pretty simple at that point. You, oh, that was a Shadow Death. So you run first the Thalnos to the um, low tap, then you drop the Alkenai and play the circle, right? Otherwise, if you it keep... Depends, yeah, it depends on what he draws, but I think that's the only line of play that really makes a lot of sense. Um, I guess alternatively, you could just play Alkenai, ping the 3-3 three, three if you play, but then low tap stays up, so there's a possibility that you just get blown out of the, the fight by the 5-5 five five that stays on the board. You can also play Arcanite Circle now, no, and then yeah. your Arcanite dies. Yeah, and then you rip. Rest <laughs> in peace. Yeah. And then if you had a zombie shell, you'd also heal up your opponent, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that can happen. I feel like I've seen this somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Second fault, okay. For 8 mana. And now Firebat's board is looking pretty horrible. And I think this may be the moment where... Second Blade Flurry. Right. It's it's still doable. It's still doable, yeah. What if he plays Malagos? And has another prep? That could be a big deal. Then Kalento needs a sh second Shrinkmeister. Malagos is 4, right? Yeah, Malagos is 4 attack, indeed. Then it's buffed to 2. <laughs> yeah, you Shrinkmeister <laughs> and then you steal back. Yeah. Ah, Kalento finds the powered shield. I would say you play first Fault Steel here. To see what's in the deck, or just to yeah. get cards? To see what's in the la what's left in the deck. That's huge information, you know? Wow, look at that. He picked up the uh, Earthling Farseer. Second one. There's a second Farseer. Yeah. <laughs> and the Firebat's almost out of cards. Or at least Valera is. So he knows that th the last card in his deck Our is very, Agent. Yeah. Because that's the last card. He stole There's an Agent. There's two more, I think. Or, yeah. No, no, no. It, I'm almost out of cards, right? So that's one left. Yeah. Oh, isn't it two? I thought it said it two. I think it's one. Okay, we'll make a debate on it. Well, there's hmm. not many options. I mean, this is horrible. This is the worst possible situation for Rogue, where you have to deal with Dr. Boom. I think, Whoa. arguably, Dr. Boom is the biggest threat to Rogue. There's Did you see that? Yeah. Firebat is a master of the, I know where I have lost, let me just get out of there and not waste yeah, but time. He lost because he played Florid with that foul nose, like... In wrong order, first of all. Well, I, I think um, his opponent could have still killed it. Like, it might have not yeah, meant the world, but, but it, it would have been... You, it gives you right. the card draw, yeah. and not him. And not him, and you get to uh, you know, cycle your deck, and you get the board yeah. presence, he doesn't steal it. So there's a, there, there's a slight misplay. I don't know if it would have changed the entire course of the game. I would say it was, it was a, big deal. a huge deal. Yeah. I, I would say that was the losing play. That, that he, had the, he was in the position... When he was winning, like clearly winning. Yeah, I think he, he had was a Thanos well. backstab to kill the Palti Shredder. 
to go face with the dagger to clear the board. And then, yeah, that's right, because he didn't go. Uh, yeah, he didn't, didn't use the backstab. The, yeah, you're right. And then of the backstab. you have a 4 1 Fanlos on board, which, which has to be dealt uh, for, uh, by the priest. And the priest has only like Holy Nova for that. Yeah. Second Alkanai. If, right? if he has the cards and he's lucky to have the second yeah. Alkanai, that's the other out. But otherwise, I guess. Otherwise, you have a 4 1 on board, yeah. which deals for ma damage. And you have the second Tank Master. And you get the spell damage as well. Yeah, so, that's so I good. guess that was a really huge deal. Uh, Alright, so apparently the uh, we're getting word that the Alliance and the Horde aren't exactly as close as, you know, the I initially thought. I thought it would be like more towards the Horde. Yeah, and what's but it? But apparently it's like 44% for the Horde, 56 really? for the Alliance. What's so up with the Horde, you guys? You are not fit to rule the Horde, I guess. For the Horde! You got the voice. You Thank should you. do voice acting for orcs. Yeah, I can sure. I can do it for gnomes, but <laughs> <laughs> I can, can do gnomes. You do orcs. That's good, right? That's gonna fit. Um, so I think Firebat's rogue is not working at all for him. Like you think so? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go on a super big guess here and say rogue's not working for Firebat. And it uh, well, if that will be the usual conquest, that will be already over. Yeah, it would be done. Oh, three. At this point. Yeah, but because What's it's up? the best of seven, there's one more deck that Kalento yeah. has to win with, which is his warrior. Warrior against rogue. If that's a control warrior. Yeah, goodbye. Rest in pepperoni, uh, Fire That's, really That's going to be a sweep from luck. Kalento. Yeah. Um, and interestingly enough, I'd like to point out, Kalento, when he submitted the deck list, um, submitted three of them. And then he was like, oh, we need four? Okay, I'm going to submit Priest. <laughs> he, did, <laughs> he didn't have the fourth <laughs> deck list at the ready. Maybe he already had it built, but he didn't think he needed four of them. So the, the deck that he added to the roster was like a last minute uh, addition, and it worked out against the Rogue. It really magnificent. worked out. He won with Priest against Rogue. Yeah, I don't even know what's up with that. I mean, it's kind of unusual. It kind of, I would say, it's really unusual. The thing is, every time we make a prediction about Kalento's Priest, we say, "Oh, this is a bad matchup." <laughs> he ends up just taking it. So next time, we say it's a good matchup, and, then and we see if we have some influence over his outcome. Okay. Yeah. Add some. Black art here. Yeah, I'm Bias. trying dark magic, man. Like, I got nothing to lose here. Like, I'm casting this. Uh, my tournament line... And, you know, even if he loses once, he seems to be doing fine. He has to win four... I mean, he has to win once with his warrior in the four games. That yeah. Will, in maximum four games. And he will face Rogue, Warlock, Warrior, and Mage. So there's going to be at least one mirror match if Firebat wins this. And yeah. then... I mean, against Grim Patron, how does Rogue fare? Assuming this is a Grim Patron from Grim Kalento. Patron against Rogue? I think, like, Rogue's ability to AoE is Blade Flurry. That's it. That's the only thing that really yeah, kills Patron but very well. This is the same when Grim Patron doesn't want to build board control. Yeah. Just want to deal, deal damage. OTK, yeah. And Rogue has no way of stopping that. Yeah. There's no taunts. Kind of like against a druid who just goes face with Druid of the yeah. Claw. You're, you're at the mercy of yeah. when he finds the lethal. And you're like... Well, he's smorked. What can I do? Yeah, SM work. I have no sludge belchers, so I don't know if Firebat's deck um, will do well against Grim Patron. And in general, I'd say Rogue has a tough time because besides Deadly Poison Blade Flurry mm -hmm. or really good, mm -hmm. you know, Blood Mage Thalnos plus Backstab. Yeah, yeah. Um, those are big deals. Like Thalnos Backstab Agent D3-2. Exactly. That's right. Remain so you can always kill what's remaining and mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. do so. And Dagger D3-1. <laughs> yeah. So if there's three of them that have been spawned. It's a huge setup, and it's really tough, like, I think, to deal with this as a, yeah, as a role that's player. That's true. All right, we're getting into the game at the <laughs> moment. It's Green Patron. Yay! Yeah, we're going to be looking at the gameplay uh, very shortly. It's actually pretty crazy um, to see Kalento playing a, a combo deck. I mean, I'm pretty happy to see him play that. You think he will rope? And I wouldn't put it past him. I, I, by the way, has, um, how much Green Patron has Life Coach played? A lot. Yeah. A lot, Interesting. a lot. And he was even explaining it on stream and, you know, while playing. So yeah. it's, wow, that's not easy for Life Coach. <laughs> All right, so apparently Colento has the Unstable Ghoul in his deck, so it's a bit more of an anti-aggro... Anti-aggro setup, yeah. Yeah, I think that's an anti-aggro setup at this point because there's very for, little other reason. For Fire, but I think he's more happy to be paired up against a Grim Patron then against Control Warrior, you know? Yeah. No, I think so too. Control Warrior is so one-sided, uh, yeah. like with Oil Rogue. It almost feels like, it almost feels as bad as when you play a uh, Freeze Mage against, against uh, Control Warrior. Nothing 
feels as bad as Freeze Mage versus Control Warrior. It's easy to win. You just drop Emperor on turn 6. Then right, you... and you OTK them with Archmage. Yeah, yeah I did right. that in Bucharest. That. that was really easy. Yeah, easy life. Yeah. yeah. You have Sorcerer's Apprentice with Echo of Medivh, right? To make Fireballs free. Dude, what? <laughs> You get four we are not playing our show much today, you know? Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so Kalento's got two Acolytes of Pain, which I have to say are very important with an Unstable Ghoul on the board. They're always important. Yeah, they're always, always important, but like when you've got a setup like this, it's pretty hard to make it even better. I would say Palta Shredder. No, yeah, just, you know, hit the board. Hmm. So I would like to take a moment here to speak about God Lento, our Lord and Savior. <laughs> Have you nothing to say about him? No, not really. I'm not. Um, I'm, I'm not the religious type, you know. Okay, I get it. Yeah. It's, it's okay. I, I forgive you, Lothar. Thank you. Thank you. You are forgiven, my child. What about Coin you attack? And, you you know. attack into the two-two, battle rage. For two cards. And then you can play Taskmaster. I I don't know how many Taskmaster he plays. That's a question. Yeah, that's actually a really good question. Now that you mention it, um, if he plays two, I would say you can use this one. But if you play only one, then you have Grom or something else to enable later. Then he plays two inner rages. Right. If you play one Taskmaster, you play two inner rages. No, no I like uh, I like the play you suggested. I think uh, it's a pretty nice play to play Battle Rage with a cool task. Or you just drop the Acolyte if you feel like it. But two executes. Oh wow, that's kind of unfortunate for Kalento here. Yeah, at the moment there's not many yeah, enablers. But I, I agree now with this Acolyte of Pain because his draw is kind of atrocious yeah. right now. <laughs> so <laughs> I favor the Acolyte of Pain instead of the Taskmaster. We don't need the board control right now. Right. No, I think it makes quite a bit of sense. And there's going to be, th at least there's going to be a good SI7 here. Wow. For the Two draws from the Acolyte of Pain. Balance, boys. And Balance. the Death Spite is being picked up. Really important card against the Rogue. Yeah, because really you can... You, well, how much damage can Colento? Oh, never mind. No, he, I was gonna say, can he, can he prevent? But never mind. That's you will draw the Amos Smith like at some point. Yeah. And then you go from five to eight hundred. Yeah, you you <laughs> go from like a little bit of weapon damage to just an OTK right then and there. Yep. So you drop the Death Spite here, I would guess, right? Death Spite kill the free free. Then play the Dread Corsair. No, no, no. Why would you play that right now? Doesn't make any sense. It dies to backstabs. And you have the Warzone Commander in your hand already, to it. so you have almost the, almost always the option because you will keep the, the Death Spite for the upcoming two turns. Yeah, you'll I be would getting say. If there was no no target for to attack, you will keep the Death Spite. So your Dread Corsair can be always played with value because a collide of Pain, Cruel Task, or Whirlwind is good. I just thought about it. Like, what are we gonna use Execute with? Yeah. Besides this, like mm -hmm. I just thought mm -hmm. about it as he, he was going about making the play, and he picks up the Emperor Thorison. Wow. So Warson Commander for two mana, it's really important. But that's also at Emperor, so... Yeah, but I think the Warrior's one is... Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. You know, that Drake and the Blade Flurry and the Backstab at minus one. Yeah, that's, that's insane. Just, you know, Imagine that's, that. That's big. I think now Colento has to use the second Execute. Yeah. Uh, I, he I wanted to drop the... Oh, wow. He goes for the Emperor. So well, he was all in. Yeah, he's... Uh, he forces his opponent to... To trade for the emperor, probably with the emperor if he doesn't have other other ways. But you know what? That most <laughs> the, most of the time it's not a <laughs> yeah. It, it's a really yeah. big all-in to assume the rogue's not gonna have something to kill the, the even not kill it like sap. It's sap enough. It, yeah. Sap is basically the same because you have no time in this matchup to play emperor a second time. Yeah, you'll only play it like yeah. once. Sap is just like deal five damage. Yeah. And now Farbad's got the board and a pretty good one of that. I, I, I feel like I would not play the Emperor there, you know? If you're Kalento, just wait a bit before you get the value out of it. Yeah. Well, the five mana sprint. A pretty cheap sprint. Because you, you still lack the Grim Patron in your hand. Alright, let's think about... Th so there's like 25 lines of play. At least. But there's no win for zero. Hmm. What about... Taskmaster... Uh, I think you have to play like your death bite about now. Yeah, you have to kill the emperor too. So I guess he will just vomit like yeah, the execute yeah, on yeah, the 5-5. Yeah, uh, five yeah. five. And now Farbat has to get a blade flurry. A good one. So I guess sprint is a viable option for one mana. Yeah. 
I prep, uh, you prep this thing and you're good to go. Wow. That's One mana sprint. Oh, look, a little tech. Like, it goes down to two, actually. It's minus three. Never mind. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lothar lied. I lied. So, guys. It's two mana, it's still okay. This is just nuts. Can you picture this? Deadly Poison Blade Flurry into Lothab? Like, he's gonna have enough mana to do all of this if he wants to. Right? Well. Oh, no, he's not, he doesn't have a dagger. Her, der. <laughs> der. <laughs> der. <laughs> der. <laughs> der. <laughs> der. Computer, computer. <laughs> so, if oh, you... Man. You have sap for two, unfortunately. But you have to eviscerate. But you can use the eviscerate to win the game, instead of maintaining I think control. at this point, like, are you really afraid of getting OTK'd from hand from Kalento? You've seen a few whirlwind effects. He used Cruel Task as removal. Yeah. How afraid are you of that? So I think you're setting up... So, uh, what about sap on the... Sap on the um, free free on the pirate attack phase. I would, yeah, I was gonna say, I would probably like do this in that specific way. Um, yeah, you, you can afford to sap it now, or you kill it right away. No, no, you don't kill it. In case another one falls. You don't kill it because you you have no targets for the saps anyway. For the saps anyway. Yeah. You He's might so also think lethal, about too. killing the armor smith this turn because he, you know, there's a death spike, you know? So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, he does that. Otherwise he's getting an extra three life, which Firebat may not be able to get back. Oh, he doesn't attack. That's interesting. Yeah, he's gonna sap Blade Free next turn, is my guess. Probably. No. Actually, that's quite a bit of damage here for Kalento. So you drop the Grom, Grom and Wurrent? I guess. Oh, you just attack face with a death bite. We're dumb, dude. <laughs> no, no, but. <laughs> okay, you mean that whirlwind effect? Okay. Yeah, I was guessing, like, which one is better? To save one mana, right? Because. If you play the Whirlwind now... Oh my god! That's lethal, right? That has to be lethal, right? Yes. Yeah, that's, Tinkers, that's like 100 sap. damage. Oh, man. 800 damage, sorry. 100? 800, 800, right, 800. 800. Why 800, by the way? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> good. So the Rogue wins the game! So Firebat's able to actually stick to this <laughs> match. Like, I don't, like, it's just... He's <laughs> able to live onwards to the next match. He still has to face three more, uh, I mean the warrior deck with three more of his decks and I mean a warrior is a mirror match so that could be a coin flip it's possibly a coin flip yeah but that was really close that was a really close match yeah. like it, it was almost match point for Kalento and Firebat is alive and hmm. I mean I don't know how his the rest of his line, if it's handlock it's pretty solid yeah if it's handlock it's really solid if it's zoo and the warrior gets weapons control, wa control warrior I feel could be pretty good against this I don't think he'd ever bring in a meta game like this. I don't think you bring Control Warrior. You don't have a. I would, as a, as a Grim Patron. Yeah. I would rather play against another uh, Grim Patron, right? Against a Grim Patron. Then no, no. no I, I would rather play against um, Control Warrior. Yeah. Than against Zoo. Well, I mean, I mean, sure, but they're different classes. Yeah, yeah but okay. He. Uh, you mean next both. up? Okay, yeah. To mean to get the the, the possible comeback. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. I was confused. I sorry. Thought... Sorry. I'm kind of mis uh, right. misinter <laughs> misinterpreted. What did you say? So. Uh, yeah. You know, if it's a, it doesn't really matter if it's Grim Patron or Contra Warrior. It's always a good matchup. Yeah. Because if you feel like a solid Grim Patron Warrior, then you feel like your favorite either way, because you feel oh, yeah, I have I'm the, the superior. Yeah. I'm right. the superior Grim Patron Warrior. I can outsmart him unless he has Emperor, but. <laughs> That's <laughs> that's basically That's like it. A, a bo an IQ bonus right away, right then and there. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard Thorson has 140. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, but he he's always one of lethal on yeah, stream. Yeah, I, I don't know what's up with that, man. Like, uh, I think that's he 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 plays something bad. He can't do it, Dad. <laughs> like, you can't do it, Dad. I'm sorry, Dad. Like, he can't. <laughs> it's just impossible. So, Warrior versus Warrior is gonna be the next match. So, if it's a coin flip, like Grim Patron versus Grim Patron. When you play Grim Patron against Grim Patron, you don't want to drop those Grim Patrons in 5 and Woodwind, everything, and just go with board control. That's it. That's what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, you play like Death Bite, set up the first charge, then you play your Grim, go all in, Inner Rage, and that's it. Like, yeah. it's, it's over. Um, so you could be able to get yourself like 4 Grim Patrons on turn 5, yeah. and then he can't handle yeah. any of them, because yeah. all he's got are 1 damage AoEs. You can't handle that because everyone is in there. Yeah, everyone, once everyone's in there, it's too late, right? <laughs> you have to play Brawl. Um, but it's kind of like unintuitive, unintuitive 
yeah. to play Brawl in a Grim Patron deck, it because doesn't. why would you play that? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So yeah. you have to have, like, the anti-Grim Patron deck in the Grim Patron <laughs> deck. Like, it's it's kind of anti-handlock, too, but... Hellfire in Zoo. That's kind of what it reminds me of, yeah, right? That'd yeah. be like Shadow Flame makes more sense. Right, exactly. Or Demon Wrath. I actually like Demon Wrath in Zoo. I'm sad we haven't seen much of it. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it seems like a pretty good So card. it's Control Warrior... Egg no, wait. There's a Warsaw Command. Yeah, there's a Warsaw Commander in that hand from uh, Firebat, so it's probably Grim Patron. But he plays Belchers. So it's kind of... It's got the edge, I think. Well, yeah. the slime. Yeah, the little slime. Yeah, the slime. Well, I think the uh, the card draw that Kalento is going to be able to generate. He has the is weapons, which better. is really important. What you want to get yeah. in the mirror match is weapons, card draw, and you you can even keep the whole combo in your hand. Right. You, you, there's no. There's yeah. no. Uh, you don't want to play the floating berserkers early on. Well, before turn four, I think it's acceptable. Before the death spite. Yeah, because yeah, you can play the second one and then. Okay, if you have two, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Well, in this case, sure. But uh, what could punish you here besides execute? Mm. Ah, nothing really. Greetings. There's a fiery war axe though, so Colento's draw. This will be dealt with very, very fast. Kill it very fast. That's Sometimes it feels so bad when you, if you play control versus control and someone kills your accolade yeah. thing for just one card draw, it feels really bad. But when you play mirror match, it's fine. Grim Patron, it's kind of okay. Yeah, because you want to draw. Like, you don't care. If I draw two, then that's amazing. If I yeah. draw one, yeah. it's still okay. Um, so, I'm no surprise there. Now, Firebats line. Oh, wow. Well, you know what's, what I found really interesting in the Grim Patron deck is the fact that sometimes you destroy your weapon by playing the second weapon. All the time, yeah. All, yeah, like really multiple times when you compare it to Contra Warrior. Like. It happens sometimes when people were thinking, wow, this is next level, but for Grim Patron it's routine. You just override yeah. Death Bite for the AoE. Yeah, sometimes you have like a 4-1 Death Bite on board, yeah. and our Death Bite in your hand, and you drop the Death Bite before attacking with the first one because you want to set up the whirlwind effect for the, for next the second turn. one. Oh, yeah, exactly. So you play Death Spite, destroy your Death Spite without attack, and then you attack with the fresh one. Yeah, to make sure that it has only one durability on the yeah. following turn. Yeah. It's. Uh, I really do like that about the new. Uh, the new like is it's become pretty standard now. Execute face your own. Did yeah. you see that? I saw that. That was Artosis. Well, good game, Firebat. <laughs> well played. Artosis is looming over the board, like. We no. should have that. We should have like a shadow, <laughs> like uh, you have a mask of Artosis, just like a shadow of Artosis cast over the board. And when you play execute, <laughs> it says put it here. <laughs> and then you target, it says you can't target that. That escalated quickly. Uh, no mission inventor, that's so funny. Like this card only sees play in combo decks. Yeah, well, Shaman played it for a while in Rogue Tempo, but just because they otherwise had no good draw engines, but now that's changed entirely. Yeah. Like, all you see is um, the Grim Patient Warrior. It's funny Oops. because sometimes it might as well be a novice engineer. <laughs> sometimes it might as well be a two draw <laughs> that draws one card, and so. But it's, it's better against aggro. Yeah. Because it, it trades for two minions. Exactly. Most you can kill time. two three twos yeah. or you know spawn a bunch of imps on the imp gang boss Definitely. to help yourself. <laughs> Armor Smith and second Wirin. Now you want to? Uh, this I don't is think so. Bad. so right? But look I at have that hand size. Like commanding shout. Yes. I, I say I vote yes. I say yay. Hmm. You say nay. 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 I really dislike the commanding shouts. It's it's useless. Most of the time, unless... Okay, I thought you were just going to say, it's a useless card, it's not worth playing, nobody should ever play that. Okay, you were still <laughs> no, going... No, no, it's like, if you don't draw an Emperor, right. then it's only usable at turn 10. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. So, at turn 10... But it makes Grim Patron versus Grim Patron very favored for you. Oh yeah, that's right. Like, you and just mirror match, wipe the board it's, it's really great. Yeah, that's a great point. I didn't great think about point. that very yeah, much, yeah. but it, it does right. help. You're right, you're spot on on that. Uh, somebody's betting on Cho Lento final. We got a lot of games to go before that can be uh, proven right or wrong. Colento Chuck Norris? What? Oh, really? Colento is, uh, in fact, I mean, he taught me to roundhouse kick. <laughs> <laughs> I think he taught Chuck Norris how to roundhouse kick. 
Firebot's hand seems to be. Yeah, it was torn to. It was good yeah. until it got bad. Um, yeah. That's, that's true. A, that's, that's a good way to put it, right? Yeah, yeah, I would say the same. It's not a tautology at all. And now, Colento's, on the other hand, is really lacking anything. <laughs> it's like, there's no... Well, AOE. never mind that. <laughs> I think we... Will we see here the first war song with Acolyte of Pain and the Battle Rage or not? Why not? Oh, man, I love why that did, play in my mind. Why didn't you play an example war song commander? With Acolyte, Acoly right? Yeah. No, 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 he, dro did, he did draw it with, uh, with the commanding shot. Never mind. Yeah, he but did. But you could have played an example Warson Commander Throating Berserker commanding shout into Battle Rage. Yeah to get yeah that's what I was like thinking about yeah. that he could actually trade and then get it. You will draw the second Warson Commander anyway in this situation. Eventually probably yeah. with the amount of card draw you're getting off this it's very likely. Well that Belcher is gonna be a bit annoying unless Kalento picks up a Grim Patron. Hmm Second oh floating. goodness! Wait, 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 this wait, wait, go wait. That, This is over, right? How much damage is it? That that's like lethal for that's, sure. That's a billion. You get three, four. So you get seven, fourteen from two floating berserkers, and but you can't kill the slime. No, no, no. You. That's that's. I feel like wait, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, Grim patron math. Don't even try, Lothar. You can. I think he's got it though. Honestly. I'm not sure. I'm still counting. You're, you're <laughs> done with it. I think you have to battle rage for the inner rage, and then you kill the slime with it. And battle then you rage. Go face. Yeah, battle rage for inner rage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you will draw 800 cards, yeah. so <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. He has like 10 cards in his deck anyway. Did Kalento not find the card he was looking for? Maybe. Or Maybe is he just smiling at the animation speed and he's thinking? If you play the battle again. rage, dude. You play the battle rage right now. Play it fast. It doesn't matter, actually, does it? Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. He will be at 14 with 114 anyway. <laughs> exactly 14 with 114. Yeah, never mind. Never mind the inner rage. Yeah. So this is green patron math in a nutshell. Bang. When you have a board <laughs> that has two frothings and charge and an and AOE, bite. you're yeah. generally winning. Right? Yeah. Especially when your opponent has two minions. Right. Yeah, he just gets even more damage for you. It's working yeah. in your favor yeah. at that point. Yeah. Um, even even three minions because there was a slime. It reminds me of Unleash the Hound in that way, where your opponent's board works for you. Unless, unless, uh, well, no, okay, that that doesn't work with Floating Berserker because I wanted to say that unless they have like three attacks, right? The Grim Patrons can't like trade efficiently. Unless with commanding those. shouts there, but yeah. yeah, it's very it's very unlikely, so it's not a very common scenario. Yeah. So this is match for Kalento going oh, up. Right, right. That's the end of the match. Yeah, it's the end of the match. Fireblad yeah. gets eliminated and knocked out of the playoffs by Kalento, who's going to be moving on to the semifinals. And afterwards. he's playing against. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Life Coach or um, or Strife Core. I don't remember on which side of the bracket he was, but I definitely know that he's going to semifinals. The next players are going to be hyped and sh show. They're going to be playing uh, up against each That'll other. It'll be a show match. Yeah, <laughs> so we can get hyped for the show <laughs> match. So, um, I'm just curious to know, though, if uh, they both... I know they both brought Warlock and Warrior. I just want to see if they both brought Grim Patron again. Um, we saw no everyone get in here. No, no, really. There, there, there were none. Like, yeah. I, I'm just a little surprised um, that that didn't come down. Maybe he doesn't even play those. New meta game. New Grim meta Patron game. Warrior yeah. without Grim Patrons. So Battle Warson Commanders and other stuff that has two and three attack. Gurubashi Berserker. Like, yeah. yeah. Actually, I will try that. I will try that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll watch you try that out. So um, right now, the only player to have won this is the first match of the evening for the playoffs. We have a lot more to come. Kalento wins versus Firebat. Um, the votes actually changed now. Alliance is down to 43%. I guess I jinxed it because I said uh, they were ahead. So uh -uh. I guess I'm... You know, I think that now. was my voice. Yeah, that's it. I, I like, can't imitate say, gnomes, but you get the. Oh, no! yeah, that doesn't work for me, yeah. man. I can't do that. I tried, by the way, yeah. but there's no way. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sad life. <laughs> so on this note, guys, I guess uh, we're gonna be moving on to high versus show next. Yeah. I don't know if there's uh, how long the break is gonna be between the, the matches, but. I guess a few minutes. Yeah. yeah All that's right. That's my guess. So it's gonna be an eight-minute break. We'll be right back, and uh, don't go anywhere. The playoffs will.